Hello, Phoenix. How are you? Hi, Sandra. I'm fine, but I'm busy right now. Is that right? Can't you spare a few moments for your best friend? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. What's up? Nothing. Shall we meet tonight? Oh, of course. Actually, I have a lot of gossip for you. Really? Well, as you know, I'm not that interested in Immigration Academy gossip. No. No, this is different. I'll tell you all about it tonight. Around eight at the cafe? Sure. See ya, busy girl. Hello, Ms. Lucan. This is Peace Officer Phoenix Wallace. How are you? Oh, hello, dear. I'm fine. And you? Very good. Can I come and visit you sometime, so we can continue our chat? Oh, I don't know, dear. I am still not feeling very well. I assure you, it will only be for a few minutes. No, I don't think today is good. My therapist instructed me not to be in contact with anyone. Oh, I see. I will call back later. Please take care of yourself, Ms. Lucan. Thank you, dear. It is very kind of you. Bye. Goodbye. I wonder if there's anything I can do to make her feel more comfortable. Hmm. Maybe I should invite Larissa somewhere she'll feel comfortable. A giant logo of Mr. Arnett's. Wow, very impressive. Hi, I'm Senior Officer Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. I was looking for Mr. Arnett. Mr. Arnett is not available at this moment? And you are? Oh, my name is Gladys Castle and I am Mr. Arnett's assistant. Well, Ms. Castle, I'm here for official business and I need to talk to Mr. Arnett. As I told you, he is not available right now. Would you like to make an appointment for a later time? No, let me remind you that I am a peace officer on official business. I suggest you tell Mr. Arnett to make time for me. Are you an employee of the GPSN? Yes, I told you that I was. Just wanted to make sure. Well, I regret to inform you that you cannot see Mr. Arnett even for official business unless he agrees to see you. And he specifically instructed me not to disturb him for anything. He has no choice. This involves an active case. It does not matter, Officer Wallace. You see, the World Class Image Makers Association, otherwise known as WEMA, the organization that Mr. Arnett is affiliated with, has a special agreement with the GPSN. According to this agreement, a GPSN officer cannot insist on meeting a senior member of WEMA. That sounds like bullshit to me. Get out of my way. I need to talk to him. I'm going to disregard your foul language at this time. But if you insist on seeing Mr. Arnett, I'm going to have to report you to WEMA. And they will directly deal with your immediate supervisor at the GPSN. I suggest you check your company rules. I see. You're serious. I would like to make an appointment with Mr. Arnett. And is this about an image makeover? You know I'm not here for an image makeover. Oh, but you should be, Officer Wallace. I can tell. You desperately need a new image. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Oh, no. The compliments come after our awesome image makeovers. Shall I sign you up for one? I don't wish to have an image makeover. I merely wish to speak to Mr. Arnett. In that case, let me check the appointment database. Hmm. He is available for you on Monday, four weeks from now. But I cannot wait four weeks. Please inform him that this is very urgent. It involves a former client of his. I just cannot disturb him, Officer Wallace. Do you want to make an appointment? All right. All right, but...
please tell me if there's an opening available sooner. Of course I will. Thank you. Is there no respect for peace officers in our society? She didn't even take me seriously. It's an advertisement flyer. It's an advertisement for a laser hair removing device, which can be used wet or dry. It's hard to imagine people using sticky wax in order to remove unwanted hair. Ouch. Door computer's malfunctioning. Here we go. Now, how on earth does this thing work? Let's see if this works. Maybe I can do something to get this thing to work. Finally, that's out of the way. Let's see if I can figure out the other. Here we go. Let's see if this works. Yes! Got it! Welcome to Sophia Capello's office. How can I help you? This is Phoenix Wallace from the Adrianopolis Peace and Security Center. Inform Dr. Capello that I am here. Officer Wallace. You do not have a valid appointment at this time. Would you like to make one? Inform Dr. Capello that this is regarding official peace business. Please hold. Working. Thank you for your cooperation. Please proceed inside. There she is, Dr. Capello. Dr. Capello, let me introduce myself. I'm Phoenix Wallace, a senior security officer from the Peace and Security Center. Welcome. Please do sit down, Miss Wallace. I guess this is regarding Mr. Bogdanoff. I'm afraid it is, ma'am. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Certainly. Dr. Capello, thank you for seeing me on such short notice. I will not take too much of your time. You're welcome. How can I be of help? When did you last see Mr. Bogdanov? It's been three weeks since I have seen Mr. Bogdanov. He canceled a couple of appointments and did not reschedule. Any explanations for the cancellations? He told me he had pressing business affairs. Were you alarmed when he did not reschedule? No. Why should I have been alarmed? Is it normal for a patient to cancel appointments and never reschedule? In my experience, the patient eventually calls. I have to remind you 
that I was Mr. Bogdanov's first real therapist. All his previous ones were computer-controlled wizard programs. I thought that he was still getting used to dealing with a real therapist. Was Mr. Bogdanov able to be objective about his sex life? You mean talking about it without exaggeration? Yes. Was he able to speak truthfully about his sexual experiences? To tell you the truth, I did not get to know him enough to make a comment about that. However, he found it difficult to engage in conversations about sex. And when he did, I had the feeling that he was showing off. What makes you think that he was showing off? In my professional experience, they all do. Did Mr. Bogdanov have any partners other than Miss Lucan? Actually, yes. He was involved with his teacher at the Child Development Center. Do you know her name? Yes. I believe her name was Katina Stavropoulos. Can you tell me about his relationship with this woman? I can tell you what I know. Being a teacher at the CDC, Miss Stavropoulos had strong maternal instincts. She could compare Mr. Bogdanov's frustrations to her own students' growing pains. I think she perceived Mr. Bogdanov as a child that was trying to imitate adults of the World Union. She wanted to care for him as she would have cared for one of her own children at the CDC. Do you think Mr. Bogdanov benefited from this care? It seems to me like he did. He desperately needed attention, and plenty was given. I realize now that he had never experienced that type of attention before. Do you mean while he was in Russia, as a child growing up? Precisely. I don't think I should take any more of your time today, Dr. Capello. Can we continue later? Sure, as you wish. Thanks for all your help. You're welcome. So Bogdanov had a love interest at the Child Development Center. PA, add Adrianopolis Child Development Center to my navigation map. Seventy-eight. Not bad at all. She must really know how to make the people share their inner self. Cutie, how are you? Hi, cutie yourself! I'm a respectable fifth grader, and you need to address me appropriately, or else I'll report you for discrimination. My goodness, I was just being friendly. Friendly, huh? You adults never know how to address the younger ones like me. Only our teachers here at the Child Development Center treat us with the respect we deserve. Fine. I apologize for my misconduct. By the way, you have a very special tattoo on your forehead. I want to be an R.I.V. when I grow up. Our teachers here are preparing all of us as potential R.I.V.s of the future. Did you know that? Of course I do. One day long ago, I was a student here myself. Anyhow, respected fifth grader, I am here to see Ms. Kati Stavropoulos. Ms. Stavropoulos is not available at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? But I need to see her right away, young lady. I am a peace officer, and... Hey! What did I say about addressing me appropriately? Oh, pardon me. Anyhow, I am here for official peace business. Please inform Ms. Davropoulos that she has a visitor from the Peace Center. 
I've already told you, she's not available. Wow, that's an insistent little kid. Maybe I should try another approach. Assorted candies. How appetizing. I don't much like gum myself, but maybe that little girl will want it. My dear respected fifth grader, how about some candy? Sure, but it depends on the flavor. Here, try this. I think you'll enjoy it. Hey, this isn't kiwi flavored. Forget it. If it's not kiwi flavored, I don't want it. Kiwi flavored candy? Darn, I don't think they have it in the dispenser. Hmm. Assorted. I don't much like gum myself, but maybe that little girl will want it. It's edible Play-Doh. I used to love these. Aha! Now I got you, you little brat. My dear, respected fifth grader, how about some candy? Sure, but it depends on the flavor. Well, I bet you'll like this one. Here, try it. All right. I love kiwi. And while you enjoy your candy, would it be possible for me to talk to Ms. Stavropoulos? I suppose so. I think she's on a break. Let me page her. Yes! Got it! Miss Devropoulos, let me introduce myself. I am Phoenix Wallace, a senior security officer from the Peace and Security Center. Hello. How can I help you? Miss Devropoulos? Just call me Katie, please. Oh, of course, Katie. I understand that you're a close companion of Mr. Vasily Bogdanov? Yes, Vasily and I are sexual partners. Why do you ask? Is there a problem? Um... I'm afraid that I have some devastating news for you. Do sit down and I will explain. Please, tell me what it is. I don't want to sit down. Unfortunately, Mr. Bogdanov is dead. He's dead? What do you mean he's dead? How did it happen? Please tell me. I regret to report that he was murdered. Murdered? He was murdered? How can that be possible? We put so much effort into raising our young. We nurture and guide them so that they can become responsible and productive citizens of the system. 
so that such atrocities should never happen. Are you telling me our system has failed to protect one of its citizens? Actually, Katie, it happened in the city of Odessa, in a Russian rogue state. Oh, those barbarians. I'm somewhat relieved that it did not happen on our soil. What am I to do without my dear Vasily? Did you know Mr. Bogdanov was going to Russia? No. I've had no contact with Vasily in the last couple of weeks. I had no idea that he was traveling to Russia. Do you know why he might have traveled there? Well, of course, Vasily was Russian. But he never mentioned any plans to me of going back there. Was there something wrong between you two? As a matter of fact, there was. We began to quarrel. Did you often quarrel? I believe that you are becoming too personal, and I'd rather not discuss it now. I know this is very difficult for you. I think I'll just come back another day. Is that all right? Sure. As you wish. Thanks for your help. Glad to be of service to the system. Poor woman. She looked shaken, yet she appeared calm and controlled. It's a good thing I didn't push her too much the first time. Hi, Ms. Lucan. It's Phoenix Wallace again. Oh, hello. How are you? Very good. And you? I am slightly better, I guess. Look, Ms. Lucan, I know these are very difficult times for you. And I appreciate your patience with me. Why don't we continue our conversation in a more pleasant place? Do you mind, uh, if we have coffee at the Pyramid? Oh, well, I must admit it is tempting. I assure you, I will go very easy on you. Well, all right then. How about if we meet at Café Rosé in one hour? Oh, that is my favorite. See you in one hour then. Bye. Goodbye. Whew, that was easy. I guess I'm getting better at this. Finally, I was able to convince her to see me. Hopefully, it'll be worth it. Hello, Ms. Lucan. Oh, hello, dear. I'm glad you could make it. I wouldn't pass a chance to spend some time at the Pyramid, especially at someone else's expense. I am officially a GPSN guest, right? Oh, sure. No problem. What would you like to eat or drink? I will have an extra spicy burrito and a black coffee, please, dear. Sure, Ms. Lucan. And... Do call me Larissa, okay? Yes, Larissa. By the way, call me Phoenix. Phoenix? Oh, that's really cute. Cute? Yes. Waiter! Is a burrito your favorite in this place? Yes, it is. It is so well flavored. I know. I also like Mexican food very much. My favorite is fajitas. Vegetarian or synthetic meat? Either is good. I like those Sinto meats very much. They actually taste better than real meat, you know? I wouldn't know. I've never had real meat. You like our pyramid? Are you kidding? I was dreaming of an apartment with a view of it. It is one of my favorite relaxation activity. Just watch it glow. I also do that sometimes. Not as much as I used to, though. You should. I discovered that it has a really soothing effect on me. I am planning on just watching it this evening to ease my pain. Did you enjoy shopping in Russia? Kind of. It was awfully expensive, though. 
Was it possible to find everything you needed? Oh, yes. If you can pay the price, you can find anything. Even the stuff not available here. Larissa, why do you think Mr. Bogdanov called Russia the Cursed Land? He did not like it there at all. He kept saying the root of all evil lied there. He was feeling that negative about his homeland? Sure. As a Union citizen, you cannot possibly understand the differences between here and there. I guess I need to visit there sometime. I hope you'll never need to. Thank you for coming all the way here to talk to me, Larissa. Maybe we'll continue chatting tomorrow at your home. Sure, dear. Au revoir. Well, that got me nowhere. It's very difficult to get any useful information from this woman. That's where I keep my clutter. The accumulation of my life. What should I wear? Hmm. I need to get going, or else I'm going to be late for my meeting with Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Well, hello, dear. What's up, Ms. Private Eye? Oh, will you stop calling me that? I'm not a private investigator. Lighten up, Phoebe. I'm just teasing you. Really, how are you? I feel sort of dizzy. Too many things happened today. Dizzy? You probably caught some nasty sickness from one of those immigrants down at your office. Oh, don't be so crude. The immigration applicants all get decontaminated prior to entering the compound. They're certainly cleaner than we are. Oh, you don't believe that, do you? Sandra, get on with it. Sandra, I witnessed the freakiest thing. I still can't believe what I think I saw. Let me guess. One of your stinky immigrants on the cover of Cosmo Online? No, Sandra. Can't you be serious for one minute? I really want to share something with you. Oh, I love it when you get defensive like this. So, tell me, what did you see? I saw one of the Immigration Academy students in the Union side of the Academy Gardens. Of course, he was not supposed to be lurking around there, so I chased after him. Then, as I was about to catch him, he walked right through an iron gate. So, did you go through the gate made of iron as well? Um, actually, no. I smacked into the gate and fell on my ass. No, oh, poor baby. That'll teach you not to mess around with illegal mind-altering drugs and alcohol. Well, thanks, Sandra. Thanks for the support. You wouldn't believe the case that came my way. What? Another stinky nutcase trying to make his way into the World Union? Nothing like that. This case is much more intriguing. Intriguing? Hmm. Sounds secretive. Can't wait to hear all the details. I have a murder case to solve. A murder? You've got to be joking. Would I joke about a murder? Come on. You've pulled my leg before. Wait a minute. You're serious, aren't you? Of course I am. But I haven't heard anything about a murder on the news. The case is being kept confidential by judge's orders. I can't believe it. Here? In Adrianopolis? No, in Russia. A Union citizen named Vasily Bogdanov was murdered in Odessa. Where the hell is Odessa? It's a port city on the Black Sea. You want to know about this murder case, don't you? Sure, tell me all the gory details. Well, the man was murdered with a firearm. 
What is a firearm? Some kind of stick on fire? No, my dear. A firearm is a weapon that was used almost a century ago. In these archaic weapons, an explosion takes place in a tiny chamber, and a small metal piece, called a bullet, is projected at high speed towards a target. Oh, Phoenix. You went into your long, drawn-out explanation mode again. Can you tell me what it is in simple terms? Okay. A firearm makes a lot of noise, causes a lot of pain, and can kill you. Oh, one of those barbaric pain-inflicting weapons. What was he doing in a rogue state anyway? I don't know yet, but he used to own the Thing store at the Pyramid. Do you know him? No, I don't. Oh, Sandra, I don't know what to make of this new generation. They're a bunch of ungrateful little bastards. Are you referring to the girls at the Thing store again? No. I'm talking about some little 12-year-old at the Child Development Center. Get this. She had a make-believe arrivee tattoo on her forehead and an attitude of a real arrivee. What did she do? Well, she was sitting in for the receptionist, and she wouldn't let me see anyone until I gave her a reward of her own choosing. Oh, is that right? That's the attitude I would want my own child to have. Do you know whose investment she is? I have no idea. But she had such a chip on her shoulder. It must have been someone with an HDI of at least 80. Well, whomever it is, if that girl is as clever as she is ambitious, she'll return all the investment made on her by the time she turns 20. I met this psychiatrist today. It was a strange encounter. Oh, tell me about it. I didn't know you were seeing a psychiatrist. I'm not, you silly. You know I can't afford one. This is the psychiatrist of the dead guy. Oh, his psychiatrist. You mean he could afford one? Apparently, yes. At least he could afford one recently. It was my first face-to-face -face encounter with a shrink. She was nice and helpful. Hmm. Those shrinks can be very tough to talk to. Remember when I was dating that psychiatrist, Herman Schuster? I couldn't have a conversation with him. He would shut me out in a very politically correct way. I suspect he was only after my body. Can't blame him, can you? Sandra, I refuse to comment on that. You're lucky that the dead guy's shrink was willing to talk to you. Maybe she'll help you solve the case, Ms. Private Eye. Sandra, what do you know about WEMA? WEMA as in World Image Makers Association? Yes, that's the one. They are an independent power group with very strong political connections. Why do you ask? Well, I went to see Bogdanov's image maker, Roger Arnett, and... That stinky immigrant was seeing Roger Arnett? Evidently he was. But I wasn't even allowed to speak with Mr. Arnett because his abrasive assistant wouldn't let me go anywhere near him. She even implied that I could be sued for violating my own company rules. Can you believe that? Oh, yes. I can believe that. Wima has very strong ties to the GPSN. I never understood the relationship between the two, but I know that image makers from Wima are playing an important role in our society. I know that, but it doesn't give this assistant the right to be politically incorrect. Well, my dear, get used to it. All of those associated with WEMA are known to be rather politically incorrect. Sandra, I met this cool lawyer today. He was just your type. A lawyer? Who's just my type? What's the man's name? Maybe I know him already. His name is Douglas D. Anderson. He has a posh office in the business district. You mean THE Douglas D. Anderson? You know him. Sure. He's one of the most prestigious lawyers in Adrianopolis. And guess who one of his clients used to be? No, don't tell me. Yes, him, Mr. Bogdanov. He's one of the most expensive. How could your dead Russian immigrant have afforded him? Beats me, but I will figure it out soon. Was he hot? Yeah, he was all right. 
Blue eyes, blonde hair, have a nice bod. So, are you going to see this hunk of a lawyer again? I think so. I will certainly have more questions for him. I'm not talking about questioning him. I'm talking about getting in his pants. Sandra, you are so crude. Why can't you keep sex off your mind for longer than 30 seconds? Want to join me the next time when I pay him an official visit? You could pose as my assistant. Get out of here. I'll meet him at one of my parties. I'll have to arrange for a lawyer's only party. Then I can see this hunk for myself. Things are very complex in this murder case, Sandra. Now I have to find this peace officer impersonator. An impersonator? Tell me more. Alethea Cordoba claims that a peace officer came to the thing store before me and asked about Bogdanov. Hey, maybe that young Central American who works with you was snooping around. What was his name again? Don Juan? Don Juan. Yeah, right. Really funny. No, it wasn't Julio. Alethea was very descriptive and sure of herself. I know it wasn't Julio. He would never have gone against Dagmar's orders. Oh, yeah. Dagmar the Cruel. I told you not to call her that. She is not cruel. She's just not very personable, that's all. Whatever. I just don't like her manners. Not politically correct at all. Oh, I met the most naive girl in town today. I wonder if she'll be any help in solving my case. Naive? In what way? In the sweet and stupid way. Under different circumstances, I would have found her to be really cute. But from an investigative point of view, I think her contributions will be very vague and limited. So what's this airhead's name? Her name is Alethea Cordoba. And I didn't call her an airhead. She just seems a little too... innocent, that's all. Well, you may need to disregard most of her comments. She might mislead you without even being aware of it. If I were you, I wouldn't waste my time on her. I don't know about that, Sandra. She may know important facts about the case and not even be aware of them. And it's my job to pry them out of her. You can't imagine how quickly the rumors are spreading with the Bogdanov case. Let me guess. He wasn't murdered. He died of overexertion. Overexertion? During exercise or something? Yes, sort of. As in, he had a heart attack while boom-booming. Sandra, get your head out of the gutter. Phoenix, I was just trying to have some fun. So, was I right? No, on the contrary. Some people think he was sliced and diced for his flesh and organs. Oh, how gross. Where did you hear this from? The girls on the floor at the thing store, of course. Phoenix, I don't know. How are you going to rely on any information from those three? I'm sure you'll be hearing more rumors from them. Julius is driving me crazy. Why? What did he do now? He hid my key and threw away my PA. I was fortunate enough to find my PA, but no luck with the key. I had to pull a trick that I saw in an old movie to access my stuff. I don't understand why anybody in your office is putting up with him. Well, it is said that he saved the life of a director during a riot in the early days of the Academy. I know all about that, but it still doesn't explain why he's still an Academy student who never pays. How old is he now? I don't know, but he looks ancient, and nothing he says makes sense anymore. I think he's going senile. Hey, could Chief Dagmar be having an affair with old Julius? Maybe that's why he's still sweeping the floors. Oh, Sandra. Do you really think Chief Morrison would sleep with a janitor? Why not? Maybe he's got something we don't know about. You had a rough day, didn't you, Phoebe? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Tell you what, there's this great party tonight, and I'm going to take you there so you could forget about life for a while. Wait a minute. Just what kind of party are you talking about? Is this one of the parties that you organize to promote promiscuity? Well, 
You know me. I'm full of surprises. But, Sandra, I stick out like a sore thumb at those parties. They're not my style. Lighten up, Phoenix. Didn't anybody tell you it's fashionable to be promiscuous? Besides, you might get lucky. What do you say? Okay, I give in. Let's go and try to forget about life for a while. What a party that was. I think I need a week to recuperate. My head hurts from all that noise. <laughs>